Hi folks, Lou here with Dual Britannia Design Notes. Dual Britannia is one of my new games that just came out. And this is the longer version. The screencast version, there will be a shorter talking head version as well, but of course it won't have as much information in it. Now this is a game that's included in a package with Britannia, an unchanged Britannia in the sense of the rules, but changed in the interface and with plastic figures and so on. This is not a variant of Britannia, however. It's a standalone game covering some of the same time period as Britannia, in this case 350 AD to 1050, and it includes Ireland. It uses methods resembling those of Britannia, but for two players. It's a great deal shorter than Britannia, but feels something like a very quick Britannia. This is one of two of my published games that originated with someone else's idea. The other is Valley of the Four Winds from 1980. PSC Games in the UK asked me to design a sort of intro game for two players that used Britannia methods more or less, but was playable in 60 to nine minutes, 90 minutes, and that was to be included with the reissue or uh, classic edition of Britannia. So I did this using a new board which is printed on the other side of the Britannia board. And Dragon Rage second edition in 2011 had shown me that the two-sided boards are quite practical. Now here are the problems. Britannia game system was not devised for two players. It was devised for four players. Long ago, I tried to adapt Britannia for two players, but too much depended on the dice. Or to put it another way, there's too much variability in the combat for two players only. And, and it was actually played a couple times. I played with somebody else. It just did not work satisfactorily. And of course, Britannia is not designed to be short. The board is too big, that is to say, too many areas. There are way too many rounds, 16, and too many nations, 17. If you want a shorter game, you've got to cut all that down. Fortunately, I dealt with the length problems in a prototype called Conquer Britannia, which is a prototype that hasn't been submitted yet, although I've worked on it for years. Conquer Britannia is a four-player, six-turn game using plastic figures starting after the Romans leave. It does go through 1066, unlike Dual Britannia. And of course, 1066 is a three or four player situation, and so you can't really use that with two players. I was able to adapt the, met the combat method from Conquer Britannia, and it also provided me with an example of a board with just 18 areas. Britannia is 37, not counting C's, and also a way to reduce the turns, and in the end the dual board is 24 land areas. I also use something close to the Conquer Britannia timeline. The Conquer combat method is a simple enough variation of Britannia. You roll two dice for each army instead of one, and it takes two hits to eliminate an enemy. You still hit on a five or a six. This reduces the standard deviation of the results. It also makes the initial land combat less lethal, which makes a difference to how the game is played. If you have a one versus one, there's only one chance in nine of one army killing the other on the first roll, because that army needs to get a five or six on both dice to get two hits. Now what this method also does is it makes for a lot of dice rolling. There are various ways to reduce the length, fewer units. I use a maintenance economy, not cumulative. In other words, you pay for existing units first. And because there's only 24 land areas, there's just not, is not as many land areas to support units. It also eliminates the overpopulation rule, simplifying things a bit. It's seven turns, beginning just before the Romans leave. There are simpler, simpler rules, though still familiar. For example, there's no King or Brett Walda. There are fewer nations, I think about a dozen. And as a simple calculation, the number of nations times the number of rounds gives you a rough idea of how long the game is going to be. 
The scoring is simpler. Uh, it has scoring after each nation turn because people expect immediate feedback these days and it encourages ag aggression and of course with only six turns it's having scoring after each turn still works out but it's after each nation turn not at the end of the round and that also provides a more immediate feedback the scoring itself is much simplified each nation has a scoring center or two and that's printed on the boards. The players don't spend time looking up how to score points. They just look at the board. And again, that's from Conquer Britannia. And there are other ways to simplify it. No movement from one sea zone to another, and there's only four sea zones. No straights, no extended rating. Uh, with the new interface, there are no nation cards, but both players have cards showing the appearance. Uh, I end the game in 1050, with the last turn seeing the effort of Canute to become king. And that simplifies the end. And of course, with only two players, it works, it's, it works out much better. <laughs> In the overall situation, I decided to have one player defending against the Anglo-Saxon invaders and other invaders. And then the Anglo-Saxon player defends against the Vikings. So one player starts as a defender and, and ends as an attacker. The other player starts as an attacker and ends as a defender. I think that gives the game a seesaw aspect that makes it much more interesting than a game where the sides are more or less equal. Some asymmetric two-player games tend to snowball, and of course this game is ferociously asymmetric. That is, if one player gets ahead after a certain juncture in a game, perhaps midway through the game in this case, that player tends to get further and further ahead. This one seems to work that way, unfortunately, just as two players on the second edition board worked. That, but that was worse, much worse. Toward the end of development, I found myself reducing the maximum armies of some nations in order to reduce the swing effect they could have on the game if they got to their maximum. Now, I tend to design and develop games over a long time, usually several years. I only had a year and part of a month to do this one, so I really had to get at it, which was kind of nerve-wracking. Designers, of course, always wish they could get more playtesting, and this one was particularly sensitive to changes. Ideally, I wanted all the Vikings on the same side as the original inhabitants of Britain, but that was unbalancing things. At one time, after some testing at Prescon, I actually split ownership of the Norse to try to fine-tune balance. But that didn't work out. It was impossible to, forget to, to prevent some shenanigans. So I abandoned that avenue. The blind tester results, and, and an awful lot of this was blind testing, not not playtesting face-to-face that I saw, other than my own solo play. The blind testing results were all over the map. Some people would say, have find that one side won. Some people would say the other side won. Some people would say it was in between. And I had my own results from playing. And it was kind of a big back and forth, which I'm not accustomed to. But certainly not accustomed to in that relatively short period. So I've never played as many solo games of anything as of Dual Britannia. But the result is it feels like Britannia. Um, you can see that the existence of Conquer Britannia allowed me to use well-tested mechanisms and that helped a lot. The, the system works fine. It's the play balance that was difficult to achieve. And without Conquer Britannia I'd never have managed in a year. Now, would this make a good term tournament game? Well, it's relatively short and simple. Uh, 90 minutes is sufficient unless you have deliberate players. Deliberate, that is, slow. So we'll see how that goes, especially nowadays you can't have face-to-face -to -face tournaments anyway. I'd probably let players bid victory points for which side they play, or they want to play. So you might say, I'll sacrifice two victory points in order to play such and such side. 
and then at the end of the game, two victory points are subtracted from your final score if you play the side you wanted. Some people don't like that method. It's kind of a self-balancing method. A lot depends on play style. Even in Britannia itself, I recall with the Avalon Hill version, the people in Canada saying they didn't see how one particular color could ever win. But the people who played at WBC had figured it out, and the results were relatively even between the four colors. So in this case, I don't like living rules, which is to say changing the rules after publication. But if a very large number of plays, especially in tournaments, shows that one side has an advantage, then the rules can be changed and publicized to adjust the balance. Thanks for listening.